Welcome to our short service of prayer for pilgrims offered before the shrine here. You are warmly invited today and indeed every day. May God give you rest and peace as we pray, as St. David did, that we may be joyful, keep the faith, and be faithful in the little things of life. A prayer. God our Father, you gave St. David to the people of Wales to uphold the faith. Encouraged by his example, may we joyfully hold fast to the things that lead into eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a reading today from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. Now on the same day, that's the evening of the first Easter day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place here in these days? They then tell their story, and in response, Jesus excavates and trawls through ancient ideas and texts and interprets these to the two grieving and confused disciples. Now, Elif Shafak, the Booker Prize-winning novelist in her recent book, How to Stay Sane in an Age of Division, writes about how it is that stories have power, power to bring us together, and how listening to each other can be nurturing, can nurture our faith, and draw us towards a kinder and wiser future. She writes, Stories bring us together. Untold stories keep us apart. We are made of stories, those that have happened, those that are still happening at this moment in time, and those that are shaped purely in our imagination through words, images, dreams, and we might also add music, and an endless sense of wonder about the world around us. And this is her prompt to show how important it is to tell our stories and be heard, to find our voice for our sake and the sake of others. She concludes, in losing our voice, something in us dies. Now, after the resurrection, we might understand that Jesus found his new voice, as Luke describes. He told Cleopas and his unnamed fellow traveler his story, what had happened, and through his excavations of the ancient texts and ideas, he declared new life. Now, Luke actually makes a very pointed statement in our text, which is often missed in Cleopas asking, are you the only stranger, and so on. That's a crazy question, frankly, given the number of people from all over Jerusalem at that time who wouldn't have known. Only a handful of Jesus' disciples were in on the experience and the story of Jesus being brought to new life. Luke, though, is making a significant point in identifying Jesus as the only stranger, and the word used is sojourner, or resident alien. And in the ancient texts of Jeremiah, this term had been used to describe God. God was an alien amongst the people. So by identifying Jesus as a sojourner, he links the personhood of Jesus to God. He was saying, 
that Jesus has the soul of God within him. Now, amongst the agonies of today, we can still excavate the ideas and music of the past, embrace with welcome those who sojourn amongst us, those who have been forced to flee homeland and loved ones. We are invited to cry with them as they tell their stories, and even have our hearts broken with them. But through such, together we can know the soul of God. And here, in this place, we can excavate the imagination of others before us, who were inspired by David's life and presence here in this valley, who found their voice in music, in writing, and in building this place, and the multitude of the little things that have been done for and offered to us. These help us keep the faith and gently even help us to find the elusive joyfulness which strains upward through the soil of this springtime of economic hardship and humanity's shared pain. We now listen to Psalm 118, beginning at the fifth verse, an opportunity to reflect and be attentive to the presence of God with us.
Thank you. So being attentive to the presence of God with us, let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for the assurance of faith and for all those who have made their faith the foundational rock on which to build their lives. Thank you for your light breaking through our darkness. Thank you for the faith that comes in times of doubt and fear. Thank you for the strength faith gives us to live confidently and positively, creatively and lovingly, that we may do justice to your love for us. Deliver us all from self-interest, from economic chaos, from political disaster, from the sufferings of war, the agonies of flight from homeland and loved ones. Bring your judgment to bear on us and establish your peace. And bless this cathedral and city community as it seeks to worship and serve here. And let us pray bringing into our hearts and minds those specially known to us who are struggling at this time. Praying for Annie, for the Ukrainian refugees in the city, for their children at the school here. For all those who visit this cathedral in tears or in pain. And as we rest or go on our way, make us faithful in our littleness until your own light shines with your full splendor and lights meet light in eternal joy and praise. Lead us to faith's perfection and love's consummation that your glory may fill our lives with endless joy. And let us pray the prayer given to the church in the version and language of our choice. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We now listen to a short hymn sung in Welsh.
So richness and beauty come to us as we hear such singing and such words. And a prayer of blessing as you might stay a while here or in your mind enjoy this holy place. Gracious God, awaken in us the zeal of your servant, St. David, that we may joyfully journey with you in singleness of heart. And may the blessing of our gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And live embraced by God, with light, love, and peace within. Amen.